Well, I'm very excited to be joined here at the desk by Casey Johnson. I wanted to did did want to take a few few moments just to introduce Casey. It's a it's a very exciting day. Um, many of you may know Casey. Uh, for those that you that, that do not, it's it's her first time uh, in front of the camera at the town hall as one of our speakers. But more importantly, uh, Casey really is the heartbeat uh, of the town hall. She's essentially our executive producer of this event. So she works tirelessly behind the scenes, uh, pulling all this great content together, working with the speakers, just the, all the coordination. Uh, we're thrilled that we can have her here at the desk today. Um, but if you enjoy the town hall, then uh, big kudos to Casey because she she does a lot to make it, it happen as seamlessly as it does. So she's back with us here today to to, uh, to do our next segment on AI. I th pretty much we're committing to a, a segment, a quarter on AI to keep all of you informed make sure we're helping demystify it for the marketplace and then also talk about its practical application. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Casey and Jason for this next segment. Thank you so much, Michael. Right. It's nice to be here with you all on this side of the camera this week. Uh, so I've had the pleasure to work with our next presenter over the last few months on our multi-part generative AI research project. Uh, you all probably remember him um, from our April 20th town hall where he digested for everybody exactly what is generative AI and chat GPT. He's um, one of the top content producers for the accounting profession and the founder of Realize. So welcome, Jason. Great to see you. Uh, so artificial intelligence, um, let's do a little bit of a quick refresher on AI before we jump into our research project and the practical application there. Uh, Artificial intelligence has really been on a remarkable journey, continuously kind of pushing the, the boundaries and the possibilities. But in reality, we've had different modes of AI available to us for decades from simple rule-based systems. Uh, think this, you know, if this, then that kind of scenarios. Um, you know, if you're on a phone system and waiting to give a prompt to then send you on your journey there. We've got complex algorithms that, you know, popular uh, search engines utilize um, to machine learning, which really moved artificial intelligence into being a data-driven approach. Uh, you can kind of think of examples that you use every day um, with that is like spam filtering. And then, of course, deep learning, which really took it to the next level of huge, massive amounts of data um, that didn't need the human interaction and actually acted uh, almost human-like in their decision-making and predictions. So think, you know, maybe your Netflix recommending the next show to watch or driverless cars. Um, so... Now we're here to large language models like ChatGPT, and I'm curious, you know, Jason, how do you even describe in the past 10, 11 months how we got so advanced with this technology? Yeah, it has been uh, it has been really wild how quickly all this stuff has kicked off. Like you said, we've all been hearing AI for a long time, right? So what what is the sudden, I guess, excitement or urgency around it? Uh, to your point, I mean, this AI has been going through hype cycles clear back to the 50s. In fact, in the 70s, they had what they called an AI winter when a whole bunch of the funding was pulled away after a couple of studies that showed, OK, we aren't actually getting the results from this that we'd hoped. And man, right now we are we're kind of the polar opposite of that. Right. So the the big thing that kicked this off actually in 2017 was the whole concept of transformer models put out in a study by Google and a lot of the technology that we have today was built atop that. It's gotten way better. It's gotten way more accessible and we've got kind of a fresh round of, of innovation that that's kicked off. It, it's amazing the, the speed at which this is evolving. So 
Jason, let's get into a little bit what we're seeing in the ecosystem. Um, last week, we hosted a, an executive roundtable here in New York City. Jason was one of our speakers, so he was out with us. And we brought in about 45 different executives from the tech companies that build the solutions that the accounting and finance professionals use um, day in, day out. And the kind of pseudo theme of the event was AI, and we heard from them about their product roadmaps. What are you seeing out there in the ecosystem and was there any great takeaway or theme that, you know, you saw last week? I honestly, what's what's really amazing about this is I don't know that I've I've ever seen such a big pivot almost across all tech, like almost throwing out the roadmap of what we thought we would be working on over the next 24 months. Everybody's answer is we're working on it as as quickly as we can. Right. And as practitioners, we're very impatient, stop telling me about AI and start saving my time with AI, right? Uh, I mean, every, I'm really without exception, the folks in that group are investing heavily in it. I know the next cohort of the ICPA Startup Accelerator, they're really focusing on on AI. So um, you know, we've got the early stuff in our hands, your, your chat GPTs, Microsoft's doing some good stuff with, with Bing chat and giving us more sort of enterprise security kind of grade AI chat experiences. It is still really, really early days, but there's a lot of investment going into this right now. Absolutely. And with specific in accounting and finance with those solution providers, I feel like I see a press release every week about yeah. somebody, whether they're integrating to create, you know, more functionality in their tools, or um, maybe it's on an audit solution or a risk fraud detection. But um, are there any um, not specific solutions, but just kind of bigger trends that you see as being the, in terms of the timeline sooner, um, practical use cases for the profession? Yeah, the really the main use case that a lot of folks are honing in on right now is this notion of a chat assistant and this chat assistant being able to see into more contextual data. And so we've seen the general chat assistants, your chat GPTs, but now we're seeing uh, more versions of this release from Salesforce to Intuit. We've seen we've seen a lot of companies talking about here is our approach to this chat assistant. And we're now starting to see versions of this that are connected to the accounting ledger. Uh, talks of versions of this that are you know connected with a work paper file where you can more easily access all the information that is in that file. So it's a lot of things. It's it's hard to generalize it to a single use case, but the biggest thing that we're seeing right now is probably chat. And we'll come back to those use cases because you've uh, helped us to develop some great ones. But this is moving fast from the major players. Uh, you, you've got some recent announcements. I, I don't know how you keep up with all of this. To be honest. <laughs> it is a lot. This is all stuff just from the last two weeks that we can rapid fire through. Uh, Bard, which is Google's AI chat assistant, it got a big upgrade and that that chat assistant can now see into all of your email history. It can see into all of the documents within the organization so that say it's helping you compose a reply to an email and it can actually see into all of that company context. Uh, OpenAI just last week announced their vision model or the ability for ChatGPT to understand things that it sees. And that's really helpful when it comes to tables, flowcharts, worksheets, uh, and kind of having a, a visual comprehension of what that looks like. But just from a very practical standpoint, that could be as simple as taking a photo of a whiteboard session that you just did with your team and having it draft you know, a company memo. Um, Microsoft is investing probably more than anybody else in what is the really like enterprise grade security level of this look like? Uh, you may have gotten this already. In fact, this week they started rolling out Windows Copilot, which is an AI assistant built directly into your Windows desktop. It just lives in a panel over on the right-hand side of the screen. And that is significant just from a standpoint of availability and that being part of everyone's operating system. They also announced uh, that on November 1st, they'll be launching their big sort of business AI initiative. That is uh, Microsoft 365 Copilot. Similar to what we talked about with Google Bard, this is a chat assistant that can see into all of your organizational data. You get back, you know, from a weekend away and say, summarize my, you know, most urgent emails and then have a conversation 
to compose those responses that'll pull in files and, and team chat conversations that you just had with a colleague that could inform that email. That's gonna be a really exciting release that we're getting here just in a couple of months. So Jason, you can imagine understanding that all of this is coming onto our own devices automatically being enabled. Um, either now or very soon, we're getting a lot of questions and concerns about security, privacy, risk. Uh, as part of our multi-part generative AI project, we, we developed this toolkit that has a pretty comprehensive um, checklist for security and privacy, some risk mitigation. Uh, but what are the, the top things that practitioners need to be thinking about when it comes to uh, protecting theirs and their clients' data? Yeah, the the big difference with AI and specifically large language models is we need to be mindful of whether the prompts that we are sending to the model are trained into the model. So for example, if you use ChatGPT right now, the default setting is anytime I prompt the model, that prompt is trained into the model and it actually goes a long ways towards improving the user experience. But obviously when we're doing this in the business context with sensitive information, we don't want that. And so in the more secure versions of this, you'll see that those prompts are not used to train the model, that the usage data remains within your organization, doesn't go anywhere that it shouldn't. Uh, but there's really a lot to this. Uh, in fact, I think you've done a great job in that, that toolkit you alluded to around the importance of transparency. Where did this language model get the information that it's returning to me? Ultimately, AI is never going to reach a threshold where it is authoritative. But if it can mimic what a human researcher does and bring me the most relevant context to help me build my own answer, that could be a great time saver. Stuff like you know biases, the fact this is built on human information and there's inherent biases in there. It ought to go without saying, but human review, uh, like that still needs to be part of the process. Frankly, I think that's why AI is a phenomenal tool for pros now, actually more so than consumers because we already have this framework for ensuring that the output is correct, right? That's really something that our profession is kind of built on as being able to validate the output. But then limiting use cases also to knowing, here's the things that it does great today and here's the things that it doesn't do great today. I saw a, saw a study recently that referred to this as the jagged leading edge. It's kind of unclear what are the things that a certain model will really do well and what are the things that it doesn't. So we're still kind of exploring that. Still lots of challenges for sure and limitations. So um, in the toolkit that we're going to be releasing, you helped us to develop these uh, five use cases that we really tried to evaluate across a firm as well as a business. Um, how we could practically apply. Most of these practitioners are probably going to benefit from AI that's already built into their solutions, but a lot of them really want to get their, that get their hands on GPT systems and start working with them themselves. So uh, why don't you walk us through the five use cases um, and, and how people will be able to, to start utilizing this? Yeah, I am... I, you know, I th we're also tired of talking about it. I try to get super practical. Like, what can I actually play with today, right? I, I, I'm ready to save time. So to rapid fire th through some of these use cases that we developed, uh, the first here, finance structured data extraction. Uh, in a perfect world, all of our programs would talk to each other and information would flow seamlessly from system A to system B, right? But that's not always reality, unfortunately. Uh, we gave a couple examples here of how you can use, take a report, and reformat data, that data into a different structure for import into another system, something you would normally have to manage in a spreadsheet. Uh, an advisory application, uh, analyzing you know, a general ledger or a set of reports through the lens of specific KPIs. Uh, are these KPIs giving us the full picture? Is there any information in the data that these KPIs may not capture? Uh, practice management, this is a really interesting one where we use an AI agent, that is an autonomous agent that will go out and carry a, out a task for you, specifically around, say I'm hiring and I'm looking for applicants, potential applicants on LinkedIn that could be a good fit that I may have a connection with, where that connection could make an intro for me. We actually run through how an AI agent can do that in an automated way. Uh, on an interview transcript assistant, one of the interesting things with AI right now is it's making transcripts more accessible 
the idea of rather than just doing that control F, like find a specific word, we can actually chat with that transcript. And that's, that's a little easier because then we don't have to get the wording just right. And particularly in audit where you have this big body of information and you may be looking for a very specific thing, that can be really helpful. And then last, tax legislation. Obviously, this stuff is massive. Uh, but using AI as a research assistant to help surface uh, aspects of legislation that are particularly relevant to the thing you're trying to figure out, using it as a second set of eyes, that's another one that we outlined that could be a great time saver.